Hope it is time already four o'clock. Okay. So we are going to start this webinar. Yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. A very good afternoon to all of you. I am Dr. Sunil Kumar Das Bendi, assistant professor in the School of Business, SBM University. And uh, here, first of all, I welcome all our eminent guest speakers, Sri Vivek Patnaik, sir, retired IS officer. Uh, and former director of international civil aviation organization. Uh, welcome you, sir. And we have another guest speaker, Sri B.C. Mohanty, sir, who is the managing director of uh, Oriclean India. Sir, we welcome you, sir. And uh, we also you. have Dr. Subrendu Sekhar De, senior vice president, ABIS Export India Private Limited. So the detailed uh, biodata of the eminent speakers will be given while deliberation of the speech. So today's topic uh, on uh, rural entrepreneurship. Uh, first of all, I also welcome our honorable uh, president and founder, Professor Vishwajit Patnaik sir, and Vice Chancellor Dr. Ray, and Pro Vice Chancellor Madam, uh, Register sir, and Central COE sir, and eminent faculty members and students in this webinar, which is 44th webinar on rural entrepreneurship. Rural entrepreneurship is increasingly seen as a promising alternative to traditional development and as it unlocks the potential of local citizens to create jobs and serve local tastes and markets. However, much of the entrepreneurship in our country is dedicated to high growth high tech development and job generating qualities. So the question is, is this necessary good route for rural entrepreneurship seeks to create jobs? Or is rural entrepreneurship distinct from entrepreneurship as a discipline presenting its own opportunities and challenges? So with these opportunities and challenges of rural entrepreneurship, may I now invite our first eminent speaker Sri Vivek Patnaik sir to present his deliberation. Sri Vivek Patnaik sir, a, a retired IS officer who also worked as an former director of International Civil Aviation Organization of United Nations India. He is also a former chairperson of Odisha Public Service Commission and he also worked as former member of International Civil Services. He is a prolific speaker and very recently I have read many of his uh, articles in Democracy Now, which was posted just three days before, and many videos of dominance on this Afghan rule and all. Sir, please sir, give your attention to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, am I visible? Uh, Am I visible or not? Am I audible or not? Vivek uh, Patnaik, sir, is not Am visible. I, am I visible? No. 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 Dr. Sunil. Yes, yes. Uh, now you are visible. There is some. Dr. Sunil. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I think the voice is breaking in between. Sometimes the voice is breaking. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> But uh, you are able to hear clearly, sir. Uh, network issues. Is uh, is my voice audible? Yes, sir. You are clearly Clear. audible. Clear. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor, for inviting me to speak on a very in very interesting subject: rural entrepreneurship. I'm very happy to see Sri Mahanti. Uh, who is an entrepreneur whom I know since uh, uh, early 80s. Uh, he's a very successful entrepreneur, a local entrepreneur, and I have visited his factory. Um, uh, I'm uh, also grateful to Mr. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Viswajit Patnaik uh, for having invited me on this occasion. Uh, particularly because uh, uh, I thought that the students must know about the opportunities that exist in the rural areas for starting uh, various kinds of projects. 
And uh, I have already uh, sent uh, my PowerPoint presentation. I can see whether you have got it or not, so Professor Manti. If you have got it, uh, please say yes. Uh, can you present it on my behalf or do I do I have to share it? Whatever yes, sir. Think. Yes, sir. I'm going to share. Oh, OK. That's very good. Very good. Then uh, 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 I would uh, start by uh, start with uh, Uh, is it visible, sir? I have presented the PowerPoint. It's all Maybe. right. It doesn't matter. Even if uh, it's not visible from your end, I can uh, certainly uh, have the presentation from my end. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is entrepreneurship? That's a fundamental question. Well, willingness to start a business. Well, there are a lot of definitions we haven't given, but I say willingness to start a business, a new business. And uh, entrepreneurship provides uh, economic development. It uh, creates a global market. It expands global market. Entrepreneur willing to work for himself, he has to be an innovator, he has to have new ideas, and he must have leadership quality, he must know how to build up a team. All these things are known to students of management, and it has an elastic meaning. Entrepreneurship can be in a mini sector, it can be micro sector, small sector, medium sector, and even large sector. Depends upon your ability and how much resources you can garner, how much money you can uh, raise. It can be a startup. And startups have begun in India. And if you say uh, unicorns, uh, have created in India. Some people say, but the most conservative estimate is ten. And what is a unit of students of management must have known by now? And uh, there must be diversity of ideas. And entrepreneurship can be a career. Entrepreneurship has evolved over a period of time in the world history. I mean, uh, you can draw the examples of entrepreneurship from Indians, from the Chinese, from Arabs, from Europeans. It can be in the field of trade. And the Arab traders used to come all the way. The European traders used to come all the way from Greece. Phoenicians and the present day Lebanese were entrepreneurs. And they used to travel long distance. Many traders have called on Kalinga, the ancient name of Orissa. And it creates always market, it creates job. Must, one is a master of his own business. Now, in the modern times, particularly when I see the students who are, most of them are millennials, with internet and social media, the possibility is tremendously high. Of course, there is element of risk and challenge. 
that is the essence of entrepreneurship. Uh, professor, am I audible, clear so far? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Clear? Yes, sir, audible? you are audible, sir. Oh, that's good. Now, what is rural and what is rural entrepreneurship? That's the question. Rural, which is not urban, is rural. There's one definition. Which is not a town, not a city, not a metro. It is usually a countryside, village, mostly agricultural area, less inhabited, per, uh, uh, per area, and close to forests, could be hilly region, could be mountainous, these all areas which are considered as rural. I would not go into history of it, because in the history you'll find the rural and urban did exist even 2000 years ago. But I will not go into it. And what is rural entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship that you see in these areas, in villages, in agriculture sector, as well as non-agricultural sector. Why rural entrepreneurship is relevant, more so now? Rural entrepreneurs play a vital role, as I mentioned, in the overall economic development of the country. Growth and development of rural industries facilitate self-employment, results in wider dispersal of economic and industrial activities, helps in maximum utilization of locally available raw materials and labor. In this country, successful rural entrepreneurs would solve many of the chronic problems within a short period of time. This is, these are the expressions of many people who have been dealing with the subject of rural entrepreneurship. I'm only quoting them. Entrepreneurs taking to rural entrepreneurship should only set up enterprise in the rural areas, but should be also using the rural produce as raw materials, employing rural people in their production process. These are the various kinds of views with regard to what is rural entrepreneurship and rural entrepreneurship. Now, now in the background of this definition, I thought I should tell you about economic scenario. I'm talking of the world and India, Odisha, but the growth has slowed down. Had slowed down and of late there has been some spark of growth, but in comparison to what was the rate of growth before pandemic and what is the rate of growth now, you can easily know that the growth has come down. Unemployment has increased. Financial institutions have been burdened with non-performing assets. Risk-taking ability of domestic entrepreneurs is in doubt. In spite of the low rate of interest offered by RBI, investment of large industrial manufacturing have not been encouraging. And you must have read the news. Recently, Ford has decided to close down. The foreign companies has gone. Stock market has been vibrant. Very interesting thing. 
capital market is very vibrant. Foreign exchange reserves have increased. Foreign institutional investments, they flow in and flow out, which is good. When they flow in, it bulges our economic condition. Flow out, it disturbs, but nevertheless, why I'm talking about this stock market, I'll come to the subject later, but it's important. Flow of new foreign investment have been affected due to ease of doing business is less competitive than countries like Vietnam, Thailand, even Bangladesh. The index of ours has improved considerably, which means those investors who want to come to India are going to better competitive advantage they have in countries like Vietnam, Thailand, and Bangladesh in the vicinity. Then we have law relating to retrospective tax law and cancellation of telecom license. Thank God, I will also mention it subsequently. There have been a positive action taken by the government in making major modification to the retrospective tax law, uh, which is a cataclysmic change with regard to the enactment of that law, which took place some, some uh, around 10 years ago. Then availability of captive mines was a problem. Land, land acquisition has been a problem. Environmental laws and local agitations of a variety of reasons. When a new project comes, they have been they have served as disincentive. Bosco in Odisha, Nano Project in West Bengal, Vedanta operating based on imported bauxite. These are examples. Bosco, after 10 years, even after the Make in India program was launched, decided to quit. Nano project in West Bengal had to shift from West Bengal to Gujarat. Vedanta is operating based on imported bauxite, although India, Odisha is surplus with bauxite. Many power plants depend upon imported coal, in spite of the fact we have lots of coal in our state in the country. Mineral-based industries have faced enormous problems. These are hard truths which must be recognized. The pandemic has come. You know, all these things have happened before. But the pandemic has contracted the economy due to lockdown. First wave followed by the second wave. Government has given a lot of bailout packages. The fiscal stability of the government is on the strain. Poverty has increased. Inequality in the society has increased. Nevertheless, big corporate houses have made profits. The valuation of stocks have increased. I'm giving these things based on statistics, which I don't want to quote here. Okay, my intention not to lend them lecture. But everybody knows what I stated is true. Then you have the global warming, the Paris Accord. Now, fossil fuel will be replaced by renewable energy. Fossil fuel, we have coal, and we, were, we have also oil, but we generally find because of international uh, understanding, which is growing very fast, that fossil fuel will be given secondary status. Maybe it may, maybe after 20 years, it will not be, it will have to taper off completely. Such is the pressure. 
the climate change warning will have its impact in big industries unless the fuel is replaced, which is possible. The hydrogen as a fuel can replace. Renewable energy like hydropower can replace. You can wind power can replace. Even solar power can replace. That's why you need also sources for it. There are possibilities. But these are the hard facts one must take keep into. The need for rural entrepreneurship, because cities, towns, and metros, urban centers are getting over congested, creating slums, pollution, health hazard, serious law and order problem. Urban governance is breaking down. Mumbai, even in 60s, and Delhi, contrast to what was 60s. Bangalore, once a beautiful city, Kolkata, what it was in late 50s. I have seen, I have seen Mumbai in 60s, Delhi in the 60s, Bangalore and Kolkata in 60s. What it was then, what it is now. During monsoon, Mumbai, Chennai are facing tremendous problems. Pollution in Delhi. Okay. Prevent migration to urban centers should be the goal by creating employment opportunities elsewhere. We have large young population in the rural areas. Millennials are literate, educated, smartphone savvy, highly conscious and aspirational. To be honest, uh, in the rural areas, you'll be surprised how people have been able to handle smartphones. And the population is still growing. And there is demographic dividend. Younger population more. Taking advantage should be the goal. Not allow the demographic dividend to turn into a disaster. Hence, harness the youth. Provide opportunities for doing business with young people taking a project locally and which will discourage them to leave the local ambience and, and not migrate to cities and towns. Work in the parental environment has a tremendous advantage. The full use of potential of women in the rural areas, another goal. Issue. Schools and colleges have equal access to girls and boys these days. And I don't know how many girls are participating today, but I find girls are doing exceedingly well in every examination. Many engineering graduates, diploma holders, ITI skills available are available in the rural and semi-urban areas. On farm activities, and on farm activities, and off farm activities like service, MSME, small business, agro-based industries are possible in rural areas. Let us try to understand in the background of this, 70% of the people of India live in India, I mean in rural areas. Vocation is mainly agriculture, mostly far, small farmers, marginal farmers, agricultural laborers and two thirds of farmers are one third agricultural laborers. And these agricultural laborers, and they are the people who on unirrigated areas do not get employment. After the agriculture season is over, they migrate to cities and 
towns and other urban centers. We have a large number of fragmented holdings. They're called agriculture tenants. You can say purchase. By the way, land records are still not up to date. Land are fragmented. They are not consolidated. Mostly the land are rain fed. Vast dependence on grain cultivation, either paddy or paddy or wheat. Credit available through money lenders. Cooperative credits are also available. And public sector banks are also providing agriculture credit. Now, introduction to rural credit is very important. And I will come to that subject later. But now, I mean, I'm continuing with the subject. Migration of small farmers, the marginal farmers, and agricultural areas beyond their immediate neighborhood in search of employment, as I mentioned, to semi-urban and urban areas and metros during lean period of agriculture, even industrial towns. This is mostly seen in the non-irrigated areas, I mentioned. Subsistent farming in tribal areas, which means dependence upon minor millets, collection of minor forage produced like bawa flowers, kendu leaf, etc. Then you have mandraga scheme, which gives a lot of employment in the rural areas. During floods, drought, cyclones to mitigate distress and relief provided by the government and non-governmental organizations. That means during floods and drought, apart from government, non-government will also try to mitigate distress. These are the conditions in which the, our marginal farmers, agricultural laborers live. In Odessa, we have, you can see the statistics. We have almost 4 20 lakh people. Rural area is 83% above. Literacy is 72%. And uh, uh, we have a large scheduled tribe and scheduled caste population. It is uh, scheduled tribe is 90 lakh. Scheduled caste is 71 lakhs. Well, the budget figure I've just quoted is outdated based on the economic survey of uh, 1890, 1898, I've given that figure. But you can always update, 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 update them. Educational institutions, you find primary schools, middle schools, high schools, colleges, plus two, even degree colleges, ITIs, engineering, engineering schools, even the rural areas. Many engineering colleges and management institutes are rural areas. Pharmaceutical colleges are in the rural areas. Rural services, rural and semi-urban areas, you have find restaurants, public eating places, where they see the uh, sweet meats, you have dhabas, you, have, uh, you find in many places, even in rural areas, chicken and mutton and egg rolls are sold. Uh, these are the things how the facilities have increased. You have tea shops, laundries, hair cutting salons, etc. You have cycle repair shops, you have welders, machinists, fitters, auto repair shops, you have pharmacies, Ayurveda practitioners, homeopathic doctors. You find the rural areas. What are the rural industries? agricultural based industries, forest based industries, handloom based industries, canning of fruits, vegetables, marine products can be set up in rural areas, making candies, making fabrics, all possible in rural areas. That can be entrepreneurship on the farm. Small farmers and marginal farmers, agricultural tenants, can diversify agriculture. 
by taking up more profit making agriculture. Why should other mentioned be, be dependent on grain cultivation? Paddy may not be always profit making, as you have seen from the newspapers, agitations, etc. How the low price gives lots of problem. Sometimes vegetable cultivation like potatoes, brinjals, cauliflower, cabbage, leafy vegetables, spinach, etc., can be more profitable. And then sugar cane, sugar industry, and its byproducts. They can be set up. Investment in sugar industry, highly capital intensive. Cooperative venture has been successful. Downstream industries of the sugar industries create a lot of MSME opportunities. Micro, small and medium enterprises are possible. You can grow hot, you can promote horticulture, fruits, banana, guavas, mangoes, cashew, coconut, pomegranates, aloe vera. Aloe vera is very very interesting thing, ghee quarry that is called in India. Excuse me, sir. Uh, Floriculture, also roses, chrysanthemum, for export potential. I'm giving these examples. Then in the rural areas, subsidiary occupation, dairy farming, poultry farming, piggery, beekeeping, fishery, goat rearing, sheep rearing, possible? Then nutrition-based food-related industry. MSME, millets based. You must have heard about the millet mission. Let people, let the students study more about millet mission. Fruits and vegetables and fishery. FAO has made a study in this respect. Sustainable development goal of the United Nations. Aims are zero hunger. Resilient, inclusive, innovative industrialization infrastructure. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes. I'm coming uh, to sir, uh, uh, As there are another two speakers, so please. Okay, okay, I know. I, I'm going to give a complete picture. Yes. yes. Another last five minutes. Yes. Then MSME and its contribution. We all know that how much of contribution it makes to GDP. It tries to help an export promotion. I'm trying to show the picture of MSME. And MSME, its categories include rural tourism, budget hotels, restaurants, even travel agencies in some rural areas can be set up, cyber cafes, retailing and wholesaling is possible, trading and agricultural commodities in rural areas, consultants, food processing, etc. Advantages, rural people support local entrepreneurship. Then availability labor. And you have skilled and semi-skilled labor these days. Less promotion cost. Local market is huge population. Banks are located in semi-urban areas. Rural tourism. International tourism has an effect. So hence, during the pandemic, domestic tourism has to look inverse. Rural tourism. And you have to identify places, archaeological discoveries, ancient temples, remnants of Buddhist heritage, etc. Then, interestingly, Odisha has started eco tourism resorts. I think people should try to understand this. Then, next is Credit institutions are available. We have cooperative credit. There is a revival of uh, a non-banking financial institution. Nabar is playing a role. Sidbi is playing a role. Mudra also has been set up. World Bank credit is available for MSME sector. I don't want to go into the details of it. Then you have government action is also needed. Bank expansion, in internet penetration, 
fiber optics expansion, creating awareness among the rural areas, hand holding by government, way forward. Way forward is try to review, oh, this is meant for the government, NBFC, non-banking financing corporations. They have to be revived. Microfinancing institutions, they have to be revived. State financial corporations should be revived. I will, the reason why I'm saying, Mr. Mahanti will tell how he has got loan from these institutions in the past and now he's become an entrepreneur. Uh, well, I don't want to go into these matters which may not be of interest at the present moment. A new mantra should be, this mantra is working from home has become a new novel, video conference, webinars, which means so connectivity. New ideas, new guys have come up. So the purpose of this lecture is what? Students are studying management, keeping the present situation in picture, recognizing job opportunities are less. Alternative way of getting gainful employment is being suggested. All the government has taken a slew of measures to raise confidence of foreign and domestic corporates. The results will not be fructified soon, it will take time. So young students need employment, hence rural entrepreneurship. Be optimistic, be positive, develop risk-taking ability, have discipline. Have innovative approach and foresight and identify what projects the business can start. In. I think I have given enough food for thought. I'm sorry, I had to take longer time because this is an initial lecture. So naturally, students have to be taken to the uh, elements and understand. them understand. Thank you very much. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for giving such wonderful inputs. Sir, I have uh, totally covered on how uh, the agriculture dependence are there, and how agriculturists are in off seasons going to be migrants. Sir, has evolved how financial institutions can play a very big role in uh, engaging the next generation entrepreneurs in rural India. As we all know that our dependence upon uh, agriculture in rural India is much high. Sarev also explained that how it is uh, our dependence upon internet uh, user and mobile users are playing a very big role. Now, in, if you go to rural area, you see each and everyone is uh, savvy to the internet. So, can these rural areas uh, can uh, make use of that resources and all we have to see. Uh, thank you very much, sir. We will take note of this and surely this will help our young students to become entrepreneurs. Now, may I now invite uh, our next uh, eminent speaker, Sri B.C. Mohanty, sir, who is a managing director of uh, Oriclean India. And Oriclean, uh, as an organization, it, its main focus uh, is on training and development of uh, workmen, mostly from the local areas, from agriculture background, in the process to have all-round work discipline and developing their skills, which have proven their skill by achieving both quality and quantity. So, may I now request our own entrepreneur of our state, Sri B.C. Mohanty, sir, to please give his deliberation. Sir, yes. please. Okay, good evening, good afternoon all. First of all, I thank you for giving me this opportunity and I thank, special thanks to Sri Vivek Patnaik, who has rightly said that I am having acquaintance with him since 1983. Actually, I treat him as the father of the entrepreneur because he was the managing director of EPCOL, and that time only a lot of industrialization and a lot of entrepreneurs also were created in the state of Odisha in the larger scale. He was also a director in Odisha State Financial Corporation. He has also immense contribution for the industrial growth. That time, because that in thousand days, that thousand industries were ex-chief minister has announced. That was also under the leadership of Sri Patnaik has been somehow, it has taken a shape, but unfortunately, the momentum could not be maintained. So I am really 
thankful that you have called me to participate in a meeting where the patnaik is chairing and he has already given he was my uh, speaker just before me and my sincere thanks and gratitude to sri patnaik incidentally because today is the 44th uh, oh, webinar yeah. of uh, our year the subject is rural entrepreneur and coincidentally <coughs> coincidentally it is also world's gratitude day i express my gratitude to professor patnaik the founder and president of a a <coughs> asbm you know and his entire entire team uh, for giving me this opportunity i also give my sincere thanks to mr subendra sekar roy at uh, the senior vice president of abis expo <coughs> sorry expo for being in this august occasion and the participants also my dear participants attendees with this because you see the subject i was just talking to dr das <coughs> during the day that why this subject is rural entrepreneur because see if you see in india we are having all are having rural background so if you take my example also you see my father was from the rural then he migrated at katak and he stayed here at katak so with, because katak was also a, till today also katak is a semi urban place because where the rural flavor is still there so with this because see the opportunity as rural entrepreneur there are really we have got immense opportunities for the rural entrepreneurship i started as an entrepreneur in 1990 that time also you see i had just taken a unit which was seized by state financial corporation at a small amount of 6 lakh 55000 that is and i have turned it around and today fortunately we are having about 640 people associated with us in my team and i can vouch that they are 24 karat gold in today's standard so whatever recognition i have got today it is for my people who are associated with me for a longer time and who are also part of my blood because the entrepreneur has to have the very few things you see which needs to be inculcated to its whole body you see that uh, to his brain that is what is required to be an entrepreneur entrepreneur first of all is an institution by itself entrepreneur is an institution by itself why because once the entrepreneur you see entrepreneur is again creating employment entrepreneur is bring value addition entrepreneur is also contributing for social economic development and this because see once why why we, somebody will be attracted to be an entrepreneur because there are two sides one is attraction and second is this uh, detraction attraction is you see we must feel that yes we must feel proud to be an entrepreneur because i feel always proud to be an entrepreneur why because you see entrepreneur is somebody because who is having the positive attitude one has to have a positive attitude then adaptability for the changes then again the <clears throat> objective should be how to achieve the goal then for this then you need the basic knowledge then you have to be very balanced and once you take a decision it must be bold then third is that commitment one must be commitment and have a, uh, have the creativity and capability to handle the things then fourth is dedication determination and decisiveness these factors actually are the paramount importance to be an entrepreneur because you see with this because in asbm i had also been there twice or thrice i i had seen how meticulously the institution functions because the president itself also got it by bit even a small cultural function also he used to was the entire thing because see, he is a also he is an entrepreneur so he is entrepreneur he is not a manufacturer but he is manufacturing product like students who are the future entrepreneurs who are the future managers because see that is again this is one of the biggest contribution what professor patnaik and his team is giving to the society 
And for this, you can see actually for the rural entrepreneurship, we have got ample opportunity in the rural sector. Because in rural sector, you have got horticulture, you have got physiculture, you have got uh, agriculture. There's all these things can be totally, because see, we need some pragmatic approach to reach the destination. It's what is happening. Because you see, government is telling that we have got single window scheme. But the single window, with the single window scheme, we have got multiple doors. Where you see the entrepreneur is totally harassed from the beginning. We have got director of industries, district industry center, and here because who are the promotional agencies. But instead of doing the promotion, they will first give you all these negative pictures. So people are demotivated. Because you see, we are unable to create entrepreneurship. Because that needs to be given a very, very really when I get concrete focus to this particular subject, because see, entrepreneurship will definitely because it will change the country's whole picture. That economic picture also can be changed and the country's economic growth also can be made and we can also generate employment to an extent which is, again, you see, whatever we are dreaming for, the entrepreneur can dream and can put it into action. Because that is the ground reality, what we are facing, why the entrepreneurs are detracted, why people are not coming forward to be entrepreneurs. Because right from taking the land, for setting up the industry, you have got local problems. Then the administration will not support you. Then you go and pay bribe to the police stations. And all these things, this is from the beginning. Then again, second, if you go to the, then let us say you just overcome that situation. The second is, because to then again, identification of a project, that is the first. Because let us say you identified a project and you made some tie up, you are, you are having all these positive aspects to start up the enterprise. But this first is that land where you have got problem. Second is you have got uh, requirement of finance. We have got a lot of problems for these startups and uh, EFDC, those who are not having the collateral, EFDC bank will not look at their face. Bank will go only who is having money, they will only go to them. Because you see, that is again, though government, everybody is announcing policies and yeah, but in the ground reality, the people are facing enormous problems. That is why people are getting discouraged to be an entrepreneur. Then you have got all these departments, because now it has again squeezed, because when I started as an entrepreneur, there are 48 departments and sub-agencies sub are involved to start up an industry and run an industry. Because you have got one department, let us say, where and measures. You have got weights and measures, then they have got enforcement, they have got vigilance. There will be three, four wings there. Then there will be electricity, you have got same problem, sales tax, because now it has come down to about 2022. It, it needs to be further reduced. Once you reduce your interest, Professor Sunil, we cannot hear you. Uh, I think uh, yeah, there is some network issue with uh, BC Mohan, sir. He will, he will rejoin it. That's okay. That's okay. We will wait for a while. Let's uh, connect. I think there is some network issue. Unless it is... Uh, unless it is... Uh, unless some pragmatic approach is taken just to create entrepreneur, either in our country or in our state in particular. Because see, we will not be able to prosper whatever we are living for. With this, I think I don't have anything else because I'm not a orator and I am a hardcore worker. So I cannot just have more you know, that uh, speech to this particular webinar. With this, I am just concluding my talk and I once again, giving my sincere thanks to the organizers and to the guests who have given me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable inputs. 
uh, in a layman style out of your own experience that is very practical study and it will be mm -hmm. very much useful to our students you have touched the points on skills how rural skills can be manifested and you have shown it practically also being a entrepreneur of our own state giving employment to so many people so there are several challenges and opportunity with that regard so i request all the participants to post your questions in the chat box which will be addressed uh, uh, independently in the question hour session thank you sir so may i now request our third eminent speaker dr subarendu sekhar desar who is working as senior vice president avis export india private limited sir uh, was graduated in veterinary science in 1984 and has done completed the ps pgdm from iim ahmedabad in 1988 he have worked in several institutions of repute like venkis india limited reliance industrial limited and a managing director of epicol odisha now he is working as senior vice president abis export india private limited sir with rich experience from academia from phd to the working cultures i think you have lots of experience which will benefit to our students sir please it is over to you Hi, thank you, Professor Sunil. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. And uh, to the outset, I'll convey my sincere gratitude to Professor Patnaik uh, for giving me this opportunity to be a speaker. In fact, today I think I joined to learn many things. I think the wonderful speech by Sri Vivek Patnaik ji, and uh, also wonderful speech by Mr. Mr. B. C. Mahanti sir also. So thank you, sir, and all the participant also. Uh, anyway i think i don't know how much time i have so uh, sir as discussed you can take 20 minutes perfectly okay. fine perfectly fine okay uh, friends as uh, the professor sunil introduced also uh, but i could not become entrepreneur i tried to i wanted to be entrepreneur but uh, whatever luckily or unluckily i could not become entrepreneur but during my 3 years stint in md as md apicol I tried my best for three years to create entrepreneurs, particularly agri entrepreneurs, as an MD AP call. And I sincerely tried for three years, and uh, of course, for the state of Odisha, I've been working for a long time. Uh, my particular field has been poultry, so I have seen the poultry industry transform from a backyard farming to one of the most advanced in the entire country. So there are many, many entrepreneurs that uh, have helped to bloom and grow and prosper and sustain their business. in the field of poultry industry poultry farming okay so friends i think uh, uh, sri vivek patnaik sir has covered many entire gamut of rural entrepreneurship uh, entire many facets of the industry i think details he has covered so bear me there some repetitions uh, so basically what for the students i may be little bit sound theoretical but let us try to understand rural entrepreneurship okay so as we understand like uh, entrepreneur which ensures value to two third of india's populations who are at the bottom of pyramid okay i may quote some places from this uh, uh, fortune at the bottom of pyramid um, book i read long time back i forgot that uh, contains but by ck prahlad and there's a wonderful piece of book like i would request all my friends participants who are here students to read that book actually that uh, By, by marketing guru like mr sikhar prahlad late sikhar prahlad uh, friends that will give immense value addition to your understanding of rural market okay and value addition uh, to rural resources and rural marriages engaging largely rural human resources and do business with 100 crore people in india okay as the mahatma gandhi said like poor of the world can't be helped by mass production but only by production by masses okay how true it is okay and uh, as has been told earlier by the speakers over 70% of indians live in rural areas 75% of the rural labor force still earns their livelihood from agricultural activities and annual income is around 60000 our state compared to national average of around 70000 so what type of rural enterprises we are talking about i just major two classification i have made one is product based entrepreneurial entrepreneurship and second service based okay 
product based if you look at like agro based enterprises like so many things uh, which can be done uh, like uh, your jaggery sugar industries pickles food processing value addition in the rural produce oil processing oil seeds fruit juice dairy products spices and we have lot of uh, the spices we have lot of like uh, success story in this our state uh, you can take the example of bharat masala mr panda ruchi masala they from a small very humble beginning like rural market selling spices by motorcycle bicycle in rural areas they have become now national players so there are so many success stories in spices also uh, they with a very humble beginning they have become a like, national players forest based produce also what is a state is a rich uh, in forest produce lot of value addition and uh, packaging can happen in forest produce also uh, wood products berry making coir industry bamboo products honey making eating plates uh, leaves mineral based industry with you do know everybody that orissa is rich in like also a lot of minerals okay uh, these are big industries may not be a rural based but these can be set up in rural areas depending on the raw materials okay textile industry we have a rich uh, heritage of textiles uh, sambalpuri sari uh, the geo tagging marketing so weaving spinning coloring bleaching handicrafts and we have lot of like uh, handicraft uh, places whether it be pipili other places we have lot of handicrafts the production and marketing engineering products also so these things also we can have a product based uh, rural enterprises and make it a success story and uh, similarly coming services also Uh, what is required also that you always when the productions the small fragmented farmers they are very they, they cannot have access to like a big market where they get the value for their money so farmers produce organizations are important fpos uh, then logistic support uh, in terms of warehousing cold storages that can be also good enterprises providing market linkages to the rural produce local market district market national market export market after aggregations and some credit linkages uh, in like internal finance micro lending capacity building of the rural uh, educated masses focus through vocational training use of technology like that also very important nowadays many speaker have told about how you can use the technology to uplift our rural people uh, through that use of iit application for livestock monitoring plant and soil monitoring modern technology elemental service like renewable energy uh in solar energy as so a lot this thing can be also set up in rural areas also and also certain business ecosystem to help the rural people business analytical platforms auction platforms some people in fact when i was md apical also we have uh, promoted some people to have this uh, uh, auction portals also for selling fruits and vegetable the collecting from the farmers from the rural areas do the aggregation and through auction the e platform selling to the customers in cities like kotak bhubneswar and rukelas um, and connectivity also basic telephone services mobile services rural areas also okay so these are the enterprises we can think of in service areas in rural areas also so friends uh, uh, this is again uh, the uh, types of rural entrepreneurship it can be individual entrepreneurship group also people can come together to provide service cluster formation co-op through cooperative also and uh, types of rural entrepreneurship farm enterprises artist entrepreneurs merchant and tribal entrepreneurs also okay uh these are the very features we have discussed that in details also previous speakers and so i'll repeat that again okay okay so what is the need for that also i think uh, as you said like we are doing business of 100 crore people like who are living either below poverty or slight above poverty line they need better then we need to raise the income we need to talk about development of the nation so i think we have to uplift these people only so that is about 70% population lives in rural areas rural industry are labor intensive great disparity of income rural or urban people regional development so these are very very common things like we need we know everybody we understand very badly that yes we need rural entrepreneurship okay and advantages are there are many okay i'll not repeat that again okay and what are the challenges also you have discussed challenges also i will not repeat that again if i go through that will be repetitive also but yes i will deal with this there are different several misconception about rural market like okay i think i will deal with this i think to clear uh, some of the misconception very common 
that uh, poor are not our target consumers because with our current cost structures, we cannot profitably compete in the market. Okay, that is one of the misconceptions in rural markets. It is not competitive. If we go, we will not make money. Okay, and second, poor cannot afford and have the use of have no use of product and services sold in the developed market. Okay, they don't bother about quality and they they don't they will buy nor pay for it. Like that is another misconceptions. Okay. Only developed market appreciate and will pay for the new technology. The poor can use the previous generation technology, old technology, outdated technology, which they can afford with that. Okay. The bottom of the pyramid is not important to the long term viability of our business. We can leave tire for governments to prolong profit. Only thing this rural market is for the government and the NGOs to deal with private company for their social work. They can do this work in private, this uh, rural areas for the entrepreneurs. Okay, this is not a area of business. So this is not their cup of tea. This is another misconception in the mind of many marketing people. Like, okay, managers are not excited to by, by business challenges that have a humanitarian dimensions. Okay, and six intellectual excitement is a developed market. There are only talented managers who want to work at the bottom of the pyramid. Okay, so these are the very common, uh, I think, wrong idea that we harbor in our mind. Okay. But uh, if you really look at real wealth today, even there are a lot of MNC, a lot of big company, corporate sector also. I'll give some example also how they have found the wealth in the rural areas, even big corporate houses also, like Hindustan Lever, you can't Procter Gambles, even like the Nirma story. If you look at the story, they have really found the wealth and uh, money in the rural areas. Okay. And now what like build communication leadership? Okay, define your vision, may map your assets, do a sort analysis. That is how to go about it. Aboriginal entrepreneurship as an entrepreneur, if you are really for make a foray into other areas, I think this is the steps you need to follow. So the, these are the, some list of projects that bridging the infrastructural gaps in the rural industry. Okay, viable projects for building community farming assets. Okay, organic inputs production, biostimulant production. These are some examples only. These are not exhaustive list, but these are the some of the area that can be looked into. Infrastructure for smart and precise agriculture. Project identified for providing supply chain. That also we discussed. And cluster formation. And project promoted by central state government, local governments for their agencies under PPP arrangements. Okay, post harvest management also. Uh, or late speaker also a little bit dealt about that also. Uh, supply chain services, warehouses, silos, pack houses for aggregations and storage and assigned units, sorting grading, cold chains, logistic facilities, primary PPCs, ripening chambers. So these are the many activities that can be we can do rural areas for the value addition and post harvest management, which can help also for a lot of value addition, uh, bringing more money. The lot of success stories also that I can so enumerate people like a lot of uh, in Mayurbhans. There are a lot of mangoes which are like a mango season. There are no buyers like, okay. But uh, when there was a, when NGO came and we had performed a FPO, all the farmers, the mango producing farmers, they formed a FPO and they collected the mango in the right time. Right time collection, then storage, then aggregation. They send it to Delhi. You will not believe the mango which was fetching 5 rupees and, or you know, 10 rupees in the season that went and sold in Delhi for more than 100 rupees. And farmers' income went by almost 10 times. Okay, so there are a lot of success stories that this aggregation and market linkages brought not only brought the benefits to the entrepreneurs but also to the farmers, also farming community also by the raising their income level, also their living standards also. So friends, uh, these are the MSME new classification. These are for the sake of knowledge. What are the old one, new one? Okay. Okay, so regarding this, what type of the possibilities? Because a little bit, uh, because our rural economy is agri based. Okay, what are the possible things that we can do in our agriculture in the rural areas? Like, because doing one activity, because you saw the many things that most we do paddy, but only paddy is not going to increase the income of the entrepreneurs. But so we have to do some combined farming or integrated farming. Like, so some of the this integrated farming examples I have quoted here. Like, for example, paddy, fishery, and mushroom. Uh, this is uh, horticulture, or uh, then uh, fisheries and poultry, then dairy and vermicompost, then again, horticulture, fishery, and poultry. 
poultry and this vermicompost, then the horticulture, fishery and poultry, dairy and vermicompost, uh, then poultry and vermicompost, poultry, then maize and vermicompost. So like maize and millet cultivation, fishery and poultry. So these are the different type of integrated farming, which will really increase the income of the farmer entrepreneurs and make it profitable. And if you have done the integrated farming with this different combination, even one is losing money, you will always make a, end up making money other two. So the viability and sustainability goes up substantially in this process. Okay. So these are the different models actually we have been promoting through Apical also integrated farming models like, okay, like PC culture, fishery one acre and broiler 2000 farms, very small, small investment with uh, uh, substantial returns. Uh, the investment also is around 9 to 10 less and 12 lakhs, but it gives uh, almost more than 20% returns to the entrepreneurs. Okay, but then fishery and dairy, uh, 10 cows, fishery and duckery, horticulture, 4 acres, and dairy farming, 10 cows in farming compost, fishery, 1 acre, and piggery, 50 numbers, horticulture, and also goatry and sheep goat, 50 numbers. So these are the different schemes, project report we are making and also promoting and also providing credit linkage to the entrepreneurs and ensuring that their production setting, they set up their production base and also provide the market linkage. So ultimately they, they become successful entrepreneurs. So that role we played, played in Apical, whatever, uh, we tried our best to do a uh, success to that. Okay, so the other different project report also, we used to promote through Apical, fresh water, pearl culture, marketing, the huge niche demand for this also, the designer pearls, okay. These also very uh, profitable venture for the entrepreneurs. Because we have every house, we have the ponds we have, then we have vermi compost and uh, seed processing, uh, <clears throat> then milk processing uh, plants, small plants like 10 liters per day. Because today, also, we look at many, many dairy farmers, the biggest challenge they have the marketing of the milk, and they don't or almost they do not get the remunerative price for their milk produced in the rural areas. <clears throat> <clears throat> the meat processing unit also, and uh, then breeding farms, small breeding farms the, for the poultry. Okay, and then floriculture. Floriculture has a huge potential. There are so many floriculture this, uh, units we have promoted in the Barampur, in Khurda area, in Bhubaneswar also. The floriculture come a big way that only not only the domestic market, uh, like in the state also, in the also in on different bigger cities of the country, but also export market also. You know, believe uh, Orissa, lot of flowers also a good export potential also. Okay, uh, in uh, the uh, IPH also in the pack house. Okay, they also have uh, good scope in the you know, in the state of Odisha also, and IOT, IOT of agriculture. Okay, so friends. So these are the different avenues then for the rural areas that entrepreneur can make foray into both product based and also uh, like uh, in uh, service sector also. So friends, like uh, what I was telling, like this, we should clear that misconception is rural because I believe, I strongly believe the rural market where the real potential is. Almost most of the cities are saturated. But if you today, that is like an unexplored market. Rural market is a totally unexplored market. Okay. So the, the perception that the rural market is not a viable market is totally wrong. Basically, uh, if you think that way, we fail to under, understand about the informal economy. The rural economy is basically about informal economy. Okay. City is mostly a formal economy. How badly suffer during demonetization? We have understood how the in, this your informal economy and they suffer during demonetizations. And don't undermine that informal economy. That is, this is around totally close to 50 to 60 percent of our total economy is your rural market, rural this informal economy. Okay, and that mostly come from your rural market. Okay, rural economy. So friends. And another also that like, uh, misconception I have clarified also that these rural people they do not want quality and um, quantity they do not pay for it friends the people in the rural area also they we have or they will also pay for it they no doubt about that everybody wants a quality even rural area also they were quality conscious so only thing is if you are really making the accessible and affordable price I think there is a huge market that is lying there okay friends. Mostly, our market here. I have seen also because I have also done some marketing, also study, also 
uh, people uh, they always think rural market actually is not a uh, really viable market because when you know and do any uh, this uh, study and this uh, market study and the surveys we try to income group high income group middle income group low income group how many people will buy how many they buy in a week and what is the total demand these things are okay these are theoretically correct but practically look at actually these income groups okay these are we normally do survey in the all the cities but rural area also that is the people there are people who have huge paying capacity also they are ready to buy also if the good products are available at an affordable price they will buy and pay for it also also i have given example of bharat masala other story also my friends just even as a student of marketing also i'll as give example of nirma also here because in nirma is a good case study of rural marketing okay when they started nirma actually they as a they totally catered rural areas okay so they had a new business strategy and uh, to focus only on rural market new new like uh, product formulation they make uh, made depending on the rural demand and uh, low cost manufacturing process rural areas they they put up wide distribution network also okay in the rural areas in the village huts also so that is how the nirma became a success story and they also special packaging also for rural areas daily purchase because the buying behavior also they don't the rural people they don't buy for long time like mostly they will buy for in a either daily purchase for their needs or weekly markets so this nirma became a success story that time actually our hindustan labor surf was like a biggest uh, the, the, the highest market share in terms of surf but when they started losing market share big to nirma so they had a, did a serious thinking in terms of they thought that okay they need something like to positioning for against nirma so they came out with a, they did the study studied the market the rural market closely they went to the farmers uh they went to the people there and how they use the uh, actually the washing detergents they found that they are normally using the either river or the common water sources for cleaning so so they had a special formulation also for this type of uh, like um, uh, they, uh, to to counter this nirma so this they reduced this oil to water ratio they reduced it the special formulation they made so for the rural market they decentralized the production base and also that they do did the also the costing work also so the entire thing like they worked out the strategy for the rural market okay so uh, that is how even the marketing strategy also they try to get all the rural market networking all the village market herds these are the targets for them so that is how they could after that launch up wheel they could able to gain retail back that market share okay so that is that is so basically there are so many success story in rural areas for many corporate houses even today if you look at the all the corporate houses also they have special strategy for rural marketing also they have semi urban and rural market they are now giving more focus because they are thinking that is the future for them so friends uh, i believe i think as a, a student of management as a like as a marketing term, uh, people as a they should not look for employment i think i think lot of thing have said up positively about entrepreneurship i think you can always explore that entrepreneurs for yourself i think uh, your real stories success story lies in the rural areas only okay thank you so much thank you thank you very much sir sunil over over to you professor sunil yes sir thank you sir thank you very much for giving a wonderful from the very explaining so clearly and from the very definitions uh, to the different models that uh, in present day in rural entrepreneurship it is a uh, moreover a test for us wants to be an entrepreneur thank you thank you very much sir so now it is time uh, for uh, question our session many questions were uh, actually addressed by our participants so may i now request uh, So my first question uh, to Sri Vivek Patnaik sir, uh, sir, what is the role of uh, women entrepreneurship in our rural uh, entrepreneurship? What is the role of women in terms of rural entrepreneurship? The role of women entrepreneurship in the rural areas, I think, is uh, uh, has a tremendous uh, scope. Uh, 
uh, women entrepreneurs can take part in every domain of agriculture and its subsidiary activities. Example, all the talk about the dairy farming and poultry farming, one can start dairy farming. Women can start without any difficulty. This is one. I'm talking of they, they can be considered as uh, rural, they can be considered agro based. In addition, they can uh, have entrepreneurship staying at home. See, if you have good penetration of the uh, internet to rural areas, sitting at home, women can certainly also participate in the stock market. I, I'm being very frank about it. You see, there is no rural, no urban for stock market. Once the, you have good access to the internet, and today uh, the government is committed to have fiber optics, and uh, it wants to take uh, uh, internet to rural areas. Uh, and if they succeed, then certainly you can use your internet facilities to do stock market. And today, for your information, I deliberately talked about the how the stock market is fluctuating in spite of the uh, uh, low growth and all that. And I want to tell you specifically that in the, in the pandemic, in India as well as in America, number of young people joining the stock market has surprisingly increased. You can go to the SEBI's uh, uh, domain and find out the details. In fact, I gave a presentation on this subject itself. So therefore, there is no area which is excluded from the women. Uh, in fact, uh, the reason as to why comes is the, what you call is the rural tourism. Rural tourism, it is possible. You can start a good restaurant in the uh, in the rural areas. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, rural areas which have potential for for tourist uh, attraction. Of course, the government has to play a role, either. Uh, giving access to the uh, rural, uh, rural tourism sites. If there are good historical sites, archaeological sites, then even take, for example, Raghurajpur. Raghurajpur. Yes. If anybody who knows about Raghurajpur, you can go and see for yourself. Uh, that entrepreneurship is can be taken up by women. I don't see that in India anything is debarred from the women. I mean, fortunately, <laughs> we are not, we don't have attitude of Taliban's in India. So uh, women have tremendous scope, my personal view. Secondly, well, the question is being asked, somebody has asked this question, what is uh, social entrepreneurship? Yes, yes social sir. entrepreneurship, when you take up one issue relating to social matter, cultural matter, particularly uh, when some people come forward to, uh, themselves or uh, association others, to take up some, like for instance, uh, uh, the, uh, many women have suffered a lot because of domestic violence. This is a cultural issue. And many, 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 uh, uh, many people have suffered because the children have been neglected. It's a social issue. And those issues can be addressed. And by the way, for social entrepreneurship, there's a there is also a scope to enter the stock market. There are people who are investing in social entrepreneurship in stock market. So scope is there. So there is also the scope for the social entrepreneurship. In, but I would not, uh, uh, if those who are willing to take a social entrepreneurship now, I was willing, they must try to raise funds. There is a question, what is the fundamental nature of an entrepreneur? There is a question I saw in the chat. Yes, Yes, entrepreneur is one who is must have ideas and must have the risk taking ability. It doesn't matter. He I must he must be willing to also lose. That uh, you, but then calculate risk always out there. Calculate risk. New ideas you must think. Apply your mind. Frankly speaking, if Mr. Mahanti could be an entrepreneur in '85 with his background. 
And what is the product, project he's running? It's very small, minus uh, a municipal project he started with. Now what it is now? And now if it could happen in 85, 1985, and today access to information is tremendous access we have got. I think, uh, and I must say, uh, Mr. Uh, das, uh, Mr. Day gave a very good presentation, excellent presentation. And he explained what are the scopes. I think these ideas which are generated by Mr. Day, and uh, he was, he has also had a stint in Apical, I, I heard. So he is in a very good position to guide people to serve the entrepreneurs. I would recommend to ASBL, frankly speaking, that's the main reason as to why I suggested to uh, your president and the vice chancellor that such a uh, webinar should organize is to start a rural entrepreneurship course. It could be a diploma yes, course. Sir, doesn't uh, it? sir, already we have an agri business course. Yes. Uh, which is a two year program on MBA. We have an yes. agri business course. Yes. Uh, agri, agri is only one aspect of rural. But yes. uh, of course, agriculture. Also in technically, also includes horticulture, it includes pisciculture, it includes poultry, everything. You know. By the way, I spent my early part of my career as a project director of marginal farmers and agriculture level development agency in tribal area like Kenja. And I was associated with this dairy farming, goat rearing, poultry farming. And I see what scope is there. And agriculture includes, by the way, all these things. You see. Yeah, exactly. I think I have um, answered many yes. questions which you didn't put yes, to me. I saw from the chat box. I thought in one go, let me answer. If thank you, Mr. thank you. Very much. Answer some question. Uh, now may I now ask uh, the next question to uh, our respected sir, B.C. Mohanty sir. B.C. Mohanty sir, can you hear us, sir? Tell me. Yes, sir. Sir. Uh, there may be so many challenges for being an entrepreneur that took from Odisha. Uh, one of our uh, uh, student, Maheshwari Tarai, is asking, what is the most challenging thing that you face as an entrepreneur? The most challenging thing for an entrepreneur in today's Jeep, you see, there are in one is you have to have bureaucratic government support. Yes. So, so that is a uh, lot of advertisements, lot of seminars, lot of uh, making Orissa and other programs are being held. But in ground reality, it is not happening. That is one. Then second thing, the people, the entrepreneur has to have patience. Because entrepreneurship is something with the overnight, cannot, you cannot just achieve anything. It needs like a process. You see, in Odia, it is tapasya. You see, you need to have full dedication. And you have to forget about everything just to be an entrepreneur, at least till you stand on your own feet. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my last, uh, next question to um, uh, Dr. Subrendu Sekhar Desar. Sir, yes, can sir. you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, Professor Sunil. Sir, nowadays, sir, there is a greater uh, improvement in the terms of rural connectivity, mobile uses, internet. Do you think, sir, the big retailers like Amazon, Flipkart, Geomart are taking away the opportunities of rural area through connectivity? Uh -huh. Or does uh, rural uh, entrepreneurship can grow with moving I think uh, the huge corporate houses like Amazon or this uh, Jomato, they have their own limitation in terms of cost uh, and uh, capital investment. I think what we are talking about rural market, localized solutions. I think there is always scope for that, and that can always give a run for the money for the MNCs. And that is, I strongly believe, actually. So we need to have a local, we need to study the local market localize solutions, use the technology, and provide the solution to the customers, I think, rural areas. I think uh, they can always compete with MNC in this localized condition rural areas. 
ಸಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ you not succeed with the me to solutions something you need to work out depending on the strengths and resources in the local area and find a unique model for that okay and that will bring success story you by copying we can not take you to great heights and you cannot create a success story okay so that is what i believe in okay thank you thank you very much so there is chances that if you do some kind of good strategy still our yeah. rural entrepreneurship can emerge using this technology right 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 yeah thank you very much sir uh, first of all you are all busy whenever i call you you are in uh, raipur or somewhere else but still you have given time and addressed our calls and uh, your 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 presence and your inputs are always valuable to us i think uh, i request uh, all the participants to give the feedbacks and i think it is time for the vote of thanks first of all i would like to uh convey my heartfelt thanks to sri vivek patnaik sir for his large experience on this area and versatile his experience and uh, his inputs knowledge of wisdom will be always uh, useful to our students and whenever you invite sir will come and give without any inputs and help us in uh, attaining the knowledge i also convey my sincere thanks to sri bc mohanty sir though sir is also went in uh, was in chennai so yesterday only he came back again the same so being an entrepreneur always busy but still he is so cordial and uh, he always says that uh, whenever is there is there any need for asbm because of professor bisujit patnaik i'll be standing there thank you for uh, for us uh, for giving us time within very short period of time and giving this valuable inputs and uh, last but not the least uh, to dr subrendu sekhar de sorry sir uh, we have given uh, the wrong uh, designations but uh, still you are a part of uh, you know, a large it's not a wrong one it's okay it's okay yeah. only the only x x md api call it's not yeah. a, it's yeah. okay and you have given a very wide scratch uh, from the very zero to hero from the definition to different models i think our students need much time from you uh, if you are a, if at all you can give time so that it, it will be longer to two hour session than might be in a physical mode it will be more useful and beneficial to the to our students we, uh, overall i convey my uh, heartfelt um, thanks to all the participants for coming here and all and to give some information about asbm university which was uh, set up in 2006 and has been confirmed this university status by government of odisha in 2019 for its excellence in education the mba program of our university have a prestigious global accreditation accreditation council of business schools and programs and from its very inception we have a track record of 100% placement and i also thanks uh, for the guidance uh, to our founder and president uh, professor bisujit patnaik sir for constantly guiding us to uh, to make so much events they are giving a free hand to convey and come with innovative ideas to explore new ideas uh, i also convey my heartfelt thanks to our vice chancellor professor sankar re kalyan sankar re for his constant guidance today also he called me and he is so pin pointing asking what, what about is it all okay and guiding like a child and i also convey my heartfelt thanks to our co vice chancellor ma'am uh, registrar coe our technical uh, part technical committees uh, webinar team and everyone in this uh, endeavor but last but not least our students for participating and making taking these inputs and being practical and come up with some kind of product in this innovation area hope you all will be part of in future endeavors with this i close this webinar officially thank you sir thank you all of you thank you all of you so we can officially wind up the session thank you so much thank you professor sunil thank you professor patnaik thank you thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. thank you bc patnaik sir thank you thank you sir